Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Come in, come in, come in, David. Well, how'd you know it was me? It was I. Such grammar. Well, blow me down. Congratulations. <laughs> how'd you know it was I? I just know, David, the most wonderful news. Now, just one moment. Hello, Mama. You finally noticed me, did you? Oh, I noticed you the minute I walked in the door, Mrs. Brown. How could I help noticing you? But my breath was so taken away by the beauty of your appearance, hmm. I couldn't even say hello. Words, words, words. And every one of them was meant, Grandma. No respect. That's what I get for being so friendly with my son-in-law. No respect. <laughs> say, why are you so dressed up today, all, all lacy and pink? Not hmm? for you. No? Thank you. I am expecting company today. No? Who? Curious. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll tell you. Your sister-in-law. Julia? Do I look swanky enough? You look like a queen, madame. Oh. What time is she coming? I won't tell you or you'll run away. Now, now, hush up and listen to my important news. Now, don't tell me that our son has cut his first tooth. Or pronounced <laughs> his first three-syllable word. Or maybe he answered the telephone in the nursery. Or he stood up on his hind legs. Now, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, before we're here, perhaps you'd better sit down. Right David, on. your arm. Very funny. All right. What's the big news? I'm all ears. Donkey. <laughs> I dangled today. You what? I dangled. Well, I suppose you think it isn't important to dangle. Oh, darling, before I judge, um, what is dangling? Oh, killjoy. It means sitting up straight and swinging your legs over the edge of the bed. Mm, we should have been here. I've always admired your legs. Oh, that's sweet, darling. But that's not the reason the news is important. Don't you see, today I dangle, tomorrow I walk. The next day I'm home. Say, that's fine news. So what about a kiss because I'm such a good girl? Such a fuss about dangling. I never dangled. Mother, you didn't. You didn't? In my day, it wasn't <gasps> stylish. After having a baby, you were either up or down, either in bed or walking. None of this in-between stuff. That's for sissies. Sissy, eh? Thank you. How long were you in bed after me, Mama? Only eight days. Ha! <laughs> I'll be home in only seven. That is different. What's so different about it? I had you. You didn't have me. Uh, uh, say that again, Mother. If you didn't understand the first time, David, it's just too bad. Dangling. <laughs> Mama is jealous. Now I really feel as if we're coming down the home stretch, David. Just a couple of more days, we'll all be together again. Well, it can't be too soon for me. No, I, I, I must say, Mama and I have had a fine time, hmm. Mama. That's one of the reasons I'm in such a hurry to get home. You two are getting along entirely too well without me. You mm -hmm. married a very jealous woman, David. I am terrified of her. Did <laughs> you know that? Mm. You two are completely and utterly foolish today. If I didn't know you better, I'd suspect you'd been out tippling. I refuse to stand around here and be insulted. Oh, I dear. don't blame you, David. <laughs> Let's go down the hall and pay our respects to the newest addition to the family, Grandma. At least he can talk. Yeah, I wonder if you'll like him so well, David, when he's no longer behind a window pane. Mm, he won't bother me. I won't let him. Tough, aren't you? Mm, very. But he has a heart of gold, Mama. And a sweet face. <sighs> sweet. Oh, so sweet. Don't you dare call my son that either, Mrs. Brown. David <laughs> hopes he'll grow up to be tough. You bet I do. You coming, Mother? Hurry back. Remember, now I'm expecting Julia here. She's visiting you, not me. You are our son's father, so you should get half the visit. If it were anyone else but Julia. Julia's so proper, so so refined. I shall have to behave. I Cheer know. up, David. Bertha's coming, too. I told her Claudia could have visitors this afternoon. <gasps> you didn't tell me. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Julia of Boston Black Bay. And Bertha, the superintendent's wife. What a happy convent combination. Maybe they won't come at the same time, fingers crossed. Well, it'll do Julia good to meet Bertha. If Julia appreciates her and isn't feeling like having heirs today. David, maybe you and Mama better stay here. Uh, you're the hostess. It's your party. We'll be back for the fireworks. I hope there won't be any. I hope. <laughs> Whoever it is, come in. 
Mrs. Norton, I'm so glad to see you. Bertha, what a wonderful surprise. <laughs> the whole family, it is here. I choose just the right time to come. Just. Hello, Bertha. You chose just the right time, and every time you choose the and right Mrs. time. And Mrs. Brown, so good to see you. Well, Bertha, how do you think my daughter looks? <sighs> Beautiful. Like a little girl, she looks. I am supposed to look like a mother, Bertha. Not at all. You look old enough only to be Mrs. Brown's daughter. But it is so good to see you. How's Fritz? He wanted to come, too, but I tell him not today. This is not right. You should not be crowded with people, one person at a time. One person at a time is a good idea. I'll tell Julia. David, now hush up. Bertha, what do you think I'm going to get out of bed tomorrow? Yeah? So soon? So soon? I thought the day would never come. Why is it? Is everybody trying to keep me in bed forever? Peace, peace. It's wonderful. <laughs> then uh, everything, it went fine? Oh, it was a cinch. Oh, Bertha, we've been so lucky. Yeah. But it is right that sometimes the nice people are lucky, too. Bertha, if you don't mind, Mrs. Brown and I are going down the hall to say hello to a certain baby that we're interested in. Have you seen him? After Mrs. Norton. Then I have time. He's not bad looking for Claudia's son. And yours. Come yeah. along, David and Bertha. Please stay here until we get back. Yeah. I'll keep her here. But, David, hurry up. Remember, Julia? Uh, good luck, darling. After you, old mother of mine. Oh, Bertha, if you could teach these children some manners, I'd be so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> David is just like Mama's son, isn't he? Yeah, because Mrs. Brown is so much a mother. I hope I'll be able to be like her. You will. And with Mr. Norton to help you, your baby will be a fine man. Between Mama and David, I'll manage. You can't miss the baby, Bertha. He's second from the left. Oh, you'd know him anyway. He's the one with the funniest expression on his face. <laughs> then I know him right off. <laughs> Mrs. Norton, I cannot stay for long. So I tell you now, I bring the baby a little something. Bertha, now you're already spoiling him. I did not buy it. We could not get something beautiful enough with our money for you, so I crochet a little blue jacket. I don't think the baby will get anything else he'll like as well. Here you are. I'm almost embarrassed to give you. Oh, Bertha, you're so talented. Oh, I wish I could wear it. <laughs> you know, I'm getting jealous of that son of mine. He's getting such lovely presents. <laughs> That's Julia. You know, it's a regular convention here today. Well, come in, come in, come in. Come on in. I go. Now, nonsense, Bertha. You just stay. It's only me, Claudia. Only you. Julia, I'm delighted you came. I didn't want to come too soon. Are you sure today's all right? Today is perfect. Julia, I'd like you to meet Bertha. This is my sister-in-law, Mrs. Hartley Norton. I'm so glad to meet you. The pleasure's mine, Bertha. Well, my lamb, you're looking very chipper. I feel very chipper. Well, I came so soon, only three days, and look at you. I'll be out of bed tomorrow. Now, don't hurry things. For heaven's sake, be careful. I will be. I think a few days in the hospital can be very pleasant. Mm, you certainly have done very well with flowers. Look at that big basket of fruit. Nancy Riddle sent it to me. <laughs> she always sends fruit. Her births, sailings, New Year's Eve, funerals. Nancy always sends fruit. Well, Bertha, don't you think the patient looks well? Mrs. Norton is not a patient. She is now more like a guest at her own party. That's exactly how I feel. In Europe, when a woman had a baby, in the little village where I was born, there was always a party in the house, and the new mother, she was the very special guest. What a lovely idea. Yeah, with music and wine. Every child born a king. <laughs> I'm afraid the friends I've visited in hospitals wouldn't quite fall into the spirit of that. Really? For heaven's sakes, why? There's nothing I like better than a good party. Well, you're very special, Lamb. Nothing seems to bother you at all. That child does not let anything bother her at all. You flatter me. No, I think maybe Bertha's right. Darling, here, unload me. There's oh, some yes. perfume and a bed jacket for you. Perfume? From Paris. Oh, it must smell wonderful. I hope there's an occasion soon for me to wear it. Wear it now. Now, sitting in bed? Such a <laughs> waste. And look at this chiffon bed jacket. Honestly, I'm tempted to spend another week here. Oh, <laughs> it isn't anything. My real presence for the baby. You'll find a perambulator and a carriage blanket set when you get back. I had it sent. Should I have 
I had it set up to the farm? No, it's perfect. The baby can sleep in it when we're at Mama's. Julia, you're so extravagant. <gasps> this heavenly perfume. David won't know me in it. <laughs> Bed jacket and the perambulator. I ought to have a baby every week. I think you've done just about enough for the present. <laughs> I hope you're not going to tie yourself down with an enormous family. You're much too young. This is just the beginning. You're going to be an aunt lots of times. Well, think it over, Claudia. I don't have to. Well, Bertha's promised to crochet me a little coat for each of my children. Now, that's an incentive, isn't it? Oh, Liebchen, you make fun. No, I don't, Bertha. Look, Julie, isn't it lovely? Well, you made this, Bertha? It is nothing. Where I come from, crocheting is learned by little babies... Before I was 12, I make myself a bedspread. Mm. You two women certainly make me feel helpless. One of you crocheting so beautifully, the other producing a son, and three days later acting as if nothing had happened. I think I'd better go home. Oh, no, Julia, stay. David will be back in a minute. He'll want to see you. But I go. You have enough visitors for today. Just because I'm in the hospital, everybody thinks I've got to take orders. Yeah, you take orders. That is why you are here. When you get home, you do as you want. I'll remember that, and I'll quote you. Now I see the baby and say goodbye to your husband and to your mama. They're down the hall, Julia, with their noses plastered against a certain nursery window. <laughs> and remember, anything you want or need, just call me up. Fritz and I will do anything we can. I'll call you, Bertha. But only because I want to thank you for everything. Goodbye, Bertha. Well, <laughs> goodbye. I go now and see the baby. Sweet wishes, Mrs. Norton. Thank you. What a charming woman. Yes, isn't she? And perfect manners. Real dignity about her. She was born with it. Bertha's an aristocrat inside. That's the only real kind, I guess. You know, it's one of the nicest things about my marriage, Julia. Hmm? What, what is, Len? You. Because I'm related to such a nice relative. Whenever you can't find the young folks, chances are they've stopped at the local fountain to join their friends for Coke. The fountain is their club, and Coke is what they like to drink. So they like to be able to offer it to friends when the crowd drops in at home. It would be fine if all their requests were as easy to grant. For Coke is only five cents a bottle today, as it has been right along. Mr. King, have you seen Claudia yet? Oh, I'm just about to drop in and pay my respects. <laughs> that child is really astounding. She acts as if nothing had happened. And yet she is well aware of the great gift she's received. Mm. Is she? It's difficult to know just what's going on inside Claudia's head. A great deal is, as Dr. Rowland will find out tomorrow. Dr. Rowland? Yes, you see, not every case is as successful as Claudia's, and doctors are human. They blame themselves for losing. Dr. Rowland is the best physician in New York. That's why I recommended him to Claudia. Well, it happens even to the best. But that's for tomorrow. That and Claudia's first walk down the corridor. Which reminds me, I'd better hurry down and call on my first nephew. Goodbye, Mr. King. So long, Mrs. Norton. As I was about to say, every day Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.